As a young boy, uh, I learned from my dad, who was also my preacher, that when I did something wrong, I needed to say I was sorry, and I needed to ask for forgiveness. Uh, as an adult, and as a pastor, and as a spiritual leader, I've learned as well that I need to do the same thing sometimes. I need to go to those who are my authorities and say I'm sorry and ask for forgiveness. And I've also realized that there are times when it may not have been something I did myself, but because I'm a spiritual leader, I may have to say I'm sorry for something that something my staff did or something that someone perceived that they were wronged because of what our, a decision our church made. And, and I knew that I was responsible because I was the spiritual leader and I needed to stand up and say I'm sorry. You know, none of those times have been times when I felt very proud of myself. <laughs> Pride was the last thing on my mind. Humility was the only attitude that I could imagine. As has been pointed out to us already today, we are the people who are called by the name Christian. We are the ones regardless of whether we have committed the sins or if they've been committed on our watch, we are the ones called by the name Christian who are responsible to go before our Father and repent and say that we are sorry. So I've learned as well that posture sometimes is a very meaningful thing. And so as we uh, go before our Father today, before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in an attitude of repentance, I'm going to ask you to assume whatever posture you feel reflects your heart. If that's kneeling, then kneel. Some might even find an opportunity to lay uh, face down. But as we begin our prayers, I would invite you at this moment to humble ourselves before our God. As we Christians go before our Lord on behalf of our nation, today, right now, at this moment, on behalf of our nation, in repentance and in humility, I invite you to join me as we pray, kneeling uh, in whatever posture you can and will be able to do. Let's assume that position right now. Jesus, we love you. We love you with all of our hearts. And we come before you today and we pray because we are your people, the people, the remnant that is called by your name. And we come before you today on behalf of the church, on behalf of our nation, which was founded on your name for your purposes, for your glory. We pray because we know the truth of what Scripture teaches us, even this truth that came from Isaiah. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Jesus, we recognize that today... As your people, the only salvation, the only hope, the only thing that can turn the tide of this nation is you. You are our salvation. We recognize that. And yet we sit in the midst of the knowledge that so many in our country would have none of it. But we, your people, called by your name, come before you and we repent, Jesus. We repent of putting our faith in our abilities, in our economy, in our wealth, in our government, in our own ideas and things that we thought would bring deliverance. And we have watched time after time that in a moment they can be destroyed. We repent of placing our security in our strength, in our human power, in our patriotic spirit, rather than in our faith in the spirit of Jesus Christ. We repent of resting on the faith of our fathers that went before us, 
without walking in that same faith, with that same courage, with that same resolve. We repent of abandoning our children to the secular voices rather than impressing upon them from their youth the truth that would mark their hearts and their minds in you for life. We repent of allowing your bride, the church, to be used for our purposes of pride and success and self-promotion rather than being the one place that would be welcoming to everyone, all people who are seeking an intimate experience of you and your presence to hear your gospel and to be washed in your word with grace. And yet they came and found rejection. We repent. We repent of offering up generations of unborn on the altar of convenience and pleasure and selfishness. We repent of allowing the institution of marriage on our watch to be redefined right in front of us and mocked. We know in our heart that it's a metaphor of your desire for intimacy with each of us. We repent of allowing our culture, of our generation to advance the agenda of the enemy, to remove the knowledge of you from every major influence of our lives, even to the point where the founding of this nation has been redefined and rewritten. We repent, O oh Lord. We cry out to you. We humble ourselves before you. And we trust in your promise that even as you spoke through your prophet Isaiah of the repentance and rest that is ours, that your heart and your desire is that yet you, O oh Lord, long to be gracious to us. We look for the day when you will rise up and show your compassion because we know that you, Lord God, are a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for you. Jesus, we are sorry for what has happened in our nation. And we come before you as your people called by your name. And we humble ourselves and we seek your face. And we turn from those wicked ways that have become part of who we are. And we ask, Jesus, that you would forgive these sins and that you would heal our land and that you would restore in our hearts a passion and a desire to seek you with all of our face. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Thank you for loving us. And we pray that once again, this nation would love you deeply from its very fiber and from its very core. And it is in your precious, saving, glorious name that we ask these things, Jesus. Amen.